Hello, everyone. I'm Michael Burney. Welcome to Glide Chat. I'm a senior technical consultant and then also a service delivery manager at GlideFast Consulting. What about you, Jordan? Jordan Lillian, senior technical consultant for GlideFast Fair Code as well. How's it going? Uh, Joel? Yeah. Hey, good afternoon. Good day. I know it's a podcast. So whenever you're listening to this, uh, how's it going? Uh, my name is Joel Simmon. I'm a technical consultant for GlideFast. Awesome. Thank you, guys. All right. So for this conversation, we're going to speak on the ServiceNow junior developer journey that we all had. So just for timeline purposes and to kind of set the backstage here, what release did you begin in, guys? Because I know for me, I began in Helsinki. What about you, Jordan? Oh, man. Um, the tail end of Eureka, I think, or even. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, Eureka. I remember. Hmm. It was kind of like in the, in between, you know, how they transition. So I remember just doing like some training stuff in Fuji and then moving over to Geneva. So right around that time. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds right. Right. Yeah. So. Holy cow. I guess I would be the newest baby out of the bunch. Man, times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's where you guys began. That's where I began as well. So whenever you were a junior developer, I just want to get into this. Like, how did you exactly learn ServiceNow itself? Like, were you immediately like competent in the ServiceNow? Did you think that you know you, you were the bee's knees since day one? Did you struggle? Like, what was that like? Please, Joel. I I know you've been through. Some <laughs> <time>. <laughs> well, no. I mean, obviously, I was not a rock star. I I definitely made some some mistakes. Nothing, nothing too you know like into the world or anything like that, obviously, but uh, definitely not a rock star. It took some time uh, for me. Like I had to overcome that fear when I first started working on projects, like worrying about like making any kind of change. Like it was a weird, like irrational fear of like, well, what if I screw something up? And then once you did, it's like, well, that sucks, but you know what? There's a way we can undo it. Right. So that, that mm -hmm. was probably one of my bigger things I had to overcome as a, you know, when I first started out, but like, as far as learning it, it's kind of going back to that same thing where it's getting your hands into the instance and making, you know, working on it because class time is good and all, and there's a lot to be gained from that, but uh, nothing's ever going to replace just, get, you know, doing the work. Exactly. You got to get your hands. Application dirty. over theory. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Even for my very first project, believe it or not, Mr. Jordan Alluyan here was actually my lead. <laughs> Joe was on that project as well. Yeah. Uh, I actually picked up a ton of info like directly from Jordan, like not even my hands on keyboard, like straight up Jordan's hands on my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh man, I, I remember that. Uh, I just remember <laughs> Bernie asked me a question or something. I'm like telling you how to do it. You're just giving me this blank canvas look and i'm like you know what here just, just, yeah. let, me, just let me type it out real quick i legit didn't know anything but for you jordan like since you started like how did you get your leg up to be able to be in that position to teach other people so when i started at a previous company did their boot camp and everything and honestly i wasn't even thinking about service now at all i was looking at doing just a full stack development and job and everything but they had a bunch of speakers come in and one of them actually happened to be my old colleague from university. And he was like the, the lead of the service now team. And he was like, yo, here, come do this with me. I'm like, okay, you don't need to tell me anymore. Like I already had that rapport with him. Like, just tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you uh, kind of leaned yeah. on him. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, just to kind of show me the ropes there. I mean, he knew everything I knew. We were classmates and everything. So, so yeah, I pretty much just took it from there and he gave me training documents and went to town. <laughs> That's good then. I know for me, man, it was, it, it was definitely a grind and it was a struggle. And I would say a lot of my time actually did go to some outside learning. Well, I say outside learning, but, um, for what it's worth, I know there's two different uh, kind of schedules that exist in the corporate world, I'll call it, or enterprise world. There's the maker schedule and the manager schedule. And you can think of the manager schedule as more of, you know, that that nine to five. Oh, I need to email something. Oh, I need to fax something. Oh, I need to talk to someone else. That's very, you know, like admin duties. Right. But when it comes to the maker schedule, where you know, we kind of fall into as makers. Well, I should say we literally fall into on that schedule. 
you'll notice like a lot of your creative juices don't come until like, you know, 1, 2, 3 p.m. and sometimes even midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m. So like for us to fit in that little nine to five time box on a manager's schedule and do maker's activities, it really didn't sit well with me. But don't get it twisted. I still got my job done. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, like I've, I'm not going to lie. I spent a lot of time. <clears throat> working after my actual job ended whenever i was outside of the office i would go home and actually you know get more billables done and i would still hit my 40 you know so i, I definitely learned that way um but let's segue to something else quick question here since you did have people to lean on and since you did dig into docs and training and all that was there anything else that helped you learn because i know for me i spent so much time like in the sn dev slack channel and this was like back in the day, like back before, you know, it is what it is today. Um, this was back when like you could like roll into the channel like <laughs> seven or eight a.m., say good morning, and like the same four to six people will reply to you. Yeah. Like, oh, hey, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, nowadays I'm not gonna say good luck doing that, but uh, you're gonna see some different faces in there every morning, which is good. It's a sign of growth. So uh, for me, S and Dev Slack channel was definitely <clears throat> a huge help. I could always go in there, you know just ask something and get an answer out uh, and it's also a good place to you know give back to the community but what about for you guys did it kind of just end at you know grabbing a senior dev to lean on did it did it kind of um, end at uh training documentations like how did you really get your leg up like really up to mid-level i would say yeah so on that one so this was also my first professional job out of out of school right so mm -hmm. um a lot of the mindset early on there was you know you gotta you gotta do your own research you gotta like learn everything yourself and and, and everything like that and quickly found out you know google's your friend it's not cheating to <laughs> to look up answers like you can you can ask other people so i mean pretty much once that kind of it came to the forefront of my mind i was like okay yeah you know what like let me ask you let me ask you mm -hmm. go through these docs google like everything just anything that can give me an answer yeah basically. <laughs> exactly all right what about you joe how did you really get your leg up uh kind of echoing the same point i i think you know when you have access to what is literally the wealth of human knowledge at your fingertips to not use that. I don't know. You'll even you'll leave money on the table with that. But one of the big things that I've learned is just like through working sessions with other developers, even if it is even if you know what you're doing, like mm -hmm. I, I've learned just you know small, tiny like shortcuts or like ways to enhance my productivity as a developer just by watching other people work and they'll do something like a little. It, it could be something as simple as just like a a shortcut, you know, on a keyboard that you know works within certain. I was like, oh wow, that that saves me so much more time instead of like. Uh, I think the most recent one was like being able to get the actual value of a field. You can mm -hmm. just like double click on the field and it'll like have a little pop up display that shows the value. Back in the day, I always did the old school, you know, doing the script <laughs> executor and then yeah. running it to get the value to make sure that that's the right value. And it's like, well, that saves me like a minute of time. Like, that doesn't sound like a lot, but over time, that it, definitely compounds. And you're not wrong at all either. Just from like shoulder surfing and working sessions with other people. I've even learned like, uh, you know how you can, you know, enter a table name in the navigation filter and do dot list at the end and it'll pop it up. Yes. Well, like if you do the, you know, if you do dot list, but you capitalize list, it'll open it up in a new tab. Mm -hmm. Like even something as simple as that has saved me so much time over the course of years that nowadays, whenever like I do like, you know, uh, show my desktop and let's say I'm just trying to dig into something for a client. They'll sit there and go, wow, you're, you're going through this so fast. I, I thought you had to, you know, click everything, use the menu, and then have to, you know, go on the whole rant or tirade or whatever. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, the, the, yeah, just those small little things over time, you can just pick up uh, little little tips and tricks along the way. That's That helps out a lot. Very true. Very true. And, I, dude, I could talk all day about tips and tricks. But <laughs> <laughs> let's move on just for time's sake. So... We know how you got good. We know how you kind of got your leg up to, you know, get better. How about this? Do you have any tips for future junior developers? And what I mean by tips is, um, should they take your same route, even though like this entire landscape and environment has changed? Because nowadays they have things like now learning, <clears throat> even us like Glidefest University. We even have our own uh, kind of training boot camp sort of deal going on. like. What would you recommend to someone new that's starting out? How would they go from that junior to mid-level? 
So that's kind of, um, yeah. So there's like, a, there's definitely a benefit to, you know, traditional classical, like learning through yeah, Glyphosate University and, and, you know, one on, even one-on-ones with like a teacher or somebody just having that mentor there, like really seek that out. That's good. Other things I would say is, you know, outside of the classroom, you know, have that drive to keep learning, you know, you need to do the work in class and you need to do the work out of class. If you want to really know this stuff. I mean, I, I don't know how many classes I can tell you that I took that I'm like, <laughs> okay, next semester we're done. Like, and kind of just like the benefit of piggybacking off of what you were saying just now, Joel is, um, you know, learning from others. Everybody has their own different learning style. Right. And you're, you guys pick up on things that I don't. So having that other perspective on how to do something not only gives you another option, but yeah, it could enhance the way you do it. So you modify it, maybe incorporate both what you already do with what somebody has done um, and come up with this whole new thing. So just, you know, keep, keep getting different perspectives on things. Like none of us are, are the, number one in the world, you know, developer, you know, everyone's always going to be doing something better than you. And mm -hmm. it's beneficial to have that in your toolbox. That's very true. I like the, the whole, like, not just shoulder surfing or not just, you know, doing what someone else is doing, but look at what they're doing, learn it, and then create kind of like your own cookbook of how you get your stuff done. And that can be anything as simple as kind of like how I describe using, you know, dot lists and all capital letters at all times. But Joel, how about yourself? I would say one of the things that's going to really help a junior developer continue to grow um, is not to become uh, myopic in their approach. So that's to say where like, you know, so as we start to become, you know, competent, proficient, we kind of know, oh, if I want to do this, you know, it's A, B, C, or D. And like, without trying to be a little more specific here, Sometimes, you know, a business rule isn't what you need for a story that you're given. Maybe you need to, you know, stop and consider uh, instead of a business rule, maybe we need to run a calculated field and have a script on that. It just, just as a for instance, you know, there's more than one way to approach things. And you want to make sure that you're not getting too much into a rut where, all right, I, you know, you're going through the steps to do this because that's not what you're getting paid to do, right? If, if we had, if you could break it down to a simple recipe each and every time, right, you can, you know, almost anybody could follow it because it's just steps you have to follow. You need to think a little bit larger and a little bit bigger with how you're approaching, you know, delivering these functionalities for clients. Um, so that's what I would say is be cognizant of what you're learning and know it, but realize that that's not the only way to go about doing it. Very true. And I like that response. So in conjunction with that, like we've gone over like, you know, learning how we learned, or I guess the whole idea of how to learn. What are some other things that do contribute to that? Because it's not just tools. It's not all technical. It's not just, you know, straight up coding to get the job done. But there's some other things that contribute to it, like soft skills, for instance. Like, I can't tell you how many classes I've gone through in, in school or any boot camps or anything like that, that don't even touch on soft skills or how important it is in a professional setting. And not only that, don't get it twisted. I, I, I don't know how to teach someone soft skills either. <laughs> it's kind of something you you yourself have to delve into and learn. Uh, I know I've read a couple of books on it that have you know helped me out, but at the end of the day, it really came down to me literally in the mirror <laughs> looking at myself and trying to get better with my own soft skills, saying anything I could as if I was on a Zoom call right now to say like, oh, you know, good morning, everyone. Because keep in mind, like I came into this role from a um, a minimum wage position. I was just a valet. So like for me to delve into, I guess, corporate America or enterprise <clears throat> America, however you want to phrase it, man, I was rough around the edges. And it took a lot of work for me to, I guess, get smoother with my approach when it came to things. Because check this out. 
you know, like whenever you're in Scrum and you've got an issue, well, I was always that guy, this is faux pas, do not do this. <laughs> I was always that guy that would just, you know, hold on to my issue. Like, oh, hey, you know, hey, Bernie, how's it going? Oh, yesterday I, uh, today I, well, today I, I kind of got this one thing. It's not really an issue. It's not really a defect. It, it's nothing to consider. It's not an impediment though. I mean, it is an impediment, but it's not an impediment. Like, <laughs> you know, like don't do that. Like actually tell your, you know, your senior dev, your tech arc, your management or, whoever it is, what your issue is, what did you try to do to actually <clears> solve <throat> it and do it in like the most clear and efficient manager possible. And I think soft skills are huge. So like, mm -hmm. do y'all agree? Like is like general, I guess, professionalism or even reliability reliability as a team member or, or working as a team or are these traits that actually help <laughs> in our, in our realm? Do y'all agree? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, and, and the thing about soft skills is literally every day you're improving upon it somehow. And that's, and that's really good because I, I mean, when I first started, you know, I'm my, myself an introverted person, I would not want to be client facing at all. Like I would freeze up. I wouldn't know what to say. I would stutter all that kind of stuff. And you kind of need to evaluate that if that is something that you do and that, and that, that's something I evaluated in myself. I'm like, okay, I need to improve this, you know, mm -hmm. because it helps. Communication is just huge across the board internally with clients um, and everything. And so the better your soft skills there, then, you know, you're, you're going to have those less gaps in communication, mm -hmm. but yeah, so kind of just improving that is just going to help a project run smoothly, a, d a delivery go well, and just, you know, everybody's on the same page with those things. So soft skills, definitely, definitely important. What about you, Joel? Is professionalism something that, that should have a heavy weight on it these days? Yes. I mean, you know, I, I just think the idea of, you know, being able to have a conversation and, and make sure that people understand what you're saying, because like sometimes, and I know I definitely, I do this, like, you find yourself hemming and hawing about what you're trying to say, kind of like what you referred to earlier, Bernie, like, Oh, I have this thing, but it's not really a thing. I don't want you guys freaking out, but it's just kind of like, Hey, look, I ran into this thing, right? I tried X, Y, and Z. I need some help. Can somebody, can I get a second set of eyes on this? Right. And people usually are more than happy to help you with that kind of stuff. Um, and then, yeah, like if you do have a problem, you know, I, I think this gets repeated a lot, but it bears continue to be repeated. Don't, be afraid to say that you don't know something, right? Because you're not going to be able to fix it, you know, just by sitting there kind of spinning your wheels. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you know, I, I think professionalism and, and also swallowing your pride a little bit, I think is part of that as well of just saying, Hey, look, I don't know, help me. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that goes a long way in, in, as far as communicating within, you know, internal teams uh, and then hourly with clients, you know, like I feel that you want to try to avoid, wishy-washy statements with them right you they want you know straightforward answers so like with mm -hmm. with clients it, it goes a long way to not be somebody who's beating around the bush totally yeah. understood i know we're gonna wrap it up here but i do want to like add on to something there it's mm -hmm. like you said don't be afraid to ask a question seriously like and what helped me with that confidence like here at glidefast we have an internal like dev help channel so like if some of us are having an issue and of course we're all remote for the most part uh, we can just put the question in the dev help channel and someone will chime in and help <laughs> us out with it and for me seeing some of the people in the company that are extremely good very talented individuals definitely top tier ask questions in there and me like seeing that that they have like you know swallowed their pride swallowed their ego anything like that and they're okay with asking a question to the general public of the company yeah. and they're not seen as any lesser for that so that definitely helped me but so yeah. I do want to say thank you, everyone, for tuning in to this Glide Chat episode. Uh, it's been fun. We've talked to you about what do we want to see in a junior developer. Uh, we've talked to you about, you know, like just how to get your leg up. And it's been fun, guys. Have a good one. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thanks, everybody. Take it easy. See you.